Generating traffic and sales can be a challenge for online merchants. But selling on the Walmart marketplace puts your products in front of millions of customers who shop on walmart.com. And right now, sellers who join Walmart Marketplace can save up to 50% on referral and fulfillment fees for the first 90 days. So get started today. Head over to marketplace.walmart.com slash savings. That's marketplace.walmart.com slash savings. Welcome to E-Commerce Conversations, a podcast by Practical E-Commerce. Welcome to E-Commerce Conversations by Practical E-Commerce. My name is Kerry Murdoch. Many merchants view Amazon as a competitor, albeit one they are forced to sell on. Brent Bellum, the CEO of Big Commerce, disagrees. He believes Amazon can complement an e-commerce business, and he joins us today to explain. Well, Brent, thank you for your time today. Thanks for having me on the air. Brent, we're here today to discuss selling on Amazon, e-commerce merchants that are selling on Amazon or contemplating selling on Amazon. Uh, with the increasing dominance of Amazon, as, as you know, uh, many merchants are grappling with how exactly to approach that company, what the strategy should be for selling on, 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 on Amazon's marketplace. My first question for you today is, what do you advise merchants? How should a merchant approach Amazon? Well, first of all, small merchants should know that e-commerce is very healthy for small merchants off of Amazon. And in fact, when we look across our base of over 50,000 SMB merchant websites, their 2016 year-on-year same-store growth is meaningfully higher than the overall average same-store numbers across the United States. And so if you kind of do the math, Amazon's growing much faster than the average in its same-store sales. And small merchants are too. It's the middle and upper end of merchants that are really struggling against Amazon. And my point is that if you're a smaller brand who can carve out a differentiated positioning for yourself off of Amazon, you can be successful with that. But as a complement, we as a company at Big Commerce strongly believe that the vast majority of brands and merchants should be selling both on their own branded site as well as on Amazon. Amazon is, by our calculation, 36% of U.S. e-commerce. And for merchants that we've surveyed who have a Big Commerce store, those that also sell on Amazon get a third of their sales from Amazon and two-thirds from their big commerce store or other channels. And what that basically means is if you're a small merchant who extends from a branded store and adds Amazon, on average, you're going to increase your sales by 50% relative to your branded store. If you go the other way, you start on Amazon and then add a branded store and all the other marketplaces and web outlets where you can sell on, on average, you will add another 200% or triple your sales relative to what you're doing on Amazon. Now, those are the averages across our merchants. Uh, But the point in all of this is that you should be selling on both a branded store and Amazon if it at all makes sense for your business. That doesn't mean you're selling the same products or selling them at the same price points or in the same ways. And in fact, there are a range of different strategies for having Amazon complement what you do on your branded site and vice versa. But you really should be doing both of those. And the final piece of advice here is that in order to do both successfully, you need to be using software or an e-commerce platform that is integrated into both. Uh, Never make the mistake of having your Amazon sales running on a completely different tech stack than your website sales because that doubles the workload. It doubles the workload for catalog management, order processing, accounting, um, inventory management, really everything. And so within the realm of ways to run both off the same tech stack, you have two options. You can either start with a marketplace management solution 
you know, at the high end, that's Channel Advisor, and for SMBs, it's Cellbrite and a wide range of other solutions that are typically integrated not just into Amazon, but a wide range of other marketplaces, as well as BigCommerce. You know, BigCommerce basically being the branded store platform. And those marketplace management solutions will keep your product catalog and your inventory and your order management and processing all synced together on one tech stack. The alternative to that is to pick a platform like BigCommerce that is natively integrated into Amazon. Our integration would let you take, for example, a catalog that you've loaded into your store, send that over to Amazon, create listings on Amazon, or be part of listings on Amazon, sell simultaneously with one view to inventory, order processing, uh, reporting back on BigCommerce. And we've heard from multiple Amazon uh, senior authorities that the integration that we have natively into Amazon is the best one on the market. Uh, we're also integrated into eBay, but if you're wanting to sell on marketplaces beyond just those two, you're going to want to use a third-party marketplace management solution, which will also have a lot of other uh, beneficial functionality built in. Let me follow up on a couple of uh, uh, interesting points you made there. You said that middle and upper Middle and upper merchants, I believe is the term you used, are the ones that are struggling. Uh, what's, your, what's your dollar bucket for smaller, middle, and upper? I, I, don't, have a, I don't have a clear dividing line. What, what I know is that merchants be selling below a million a year on their branded website uh, on our platform are growing meaningfully faster than the – average for U.S. e-commerce, and I'll, I'll presume for a second that we're representative of other platforms, but maybe our merchants are doing better. I don't know. Um, so somewhere between north of a million and probably north of 50 million is the dividing line where, on average, merchants are growing much more slowly than the average. They have to be uh, if Amazon and, and smaller merchants are growing faster. And I think there was an Internet retailer article looking at the IR1000 that more or less said the same thing, that, um, you know, sort of the large segment and a part of the mid-market is where Amazon's taking the most share, um, and, and they probably have a dividing point better defined. You mentioned that uh, for smaller merchants, the key was a, a compelling niche. I don't think you used that term, but words to the effect of a compelling niche. What is a niche for a smaller merchant in the age of Amazon? Well, I mean, one of the most uh, successful ways to do it is if your product is your own brand, either because you're the manufacturer or a reseller, and your product itself is differentiated. So you've got the combination of uh, product that is different than other product on the market and your own brand name behind that. That is the one-two punch that is most powerful. Um, beyond that, if you are selling the same product that other people are selling, it is a lot harder work to build you know, a brand around yourself as a branded seller of that product. On Amazon, you can't even do that. You just are competing on the things that Amazon values in the buy box. And that is a very uh, ruthless and cutthroat competitive situation to be in. But for every single product, someone's winning that competition, whether it's Amazon or a third-party marketplace seller. Uh, somebody's always a winner of the buy box. And if you out-compete others for that position, then you can still be a winner. But certainly it helps when you're differentiated. Say I'm uh, one of those merchants, uh, perhaps a smaller merchant with my own brand. What would be a complementary strategy? You mentioned the 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 necessity of a complementary strategy on Amazon. What would be a, an example of a complementary strategy? Great. I'll give you a couple of examples. So in one example, it's a, um, it's a, the case study from us is it's an industrial products, electronics products seller. And they sell a huge catalog of completely commoditized items. Um, they do the unusual thing is they put this, the entire catalog on Amazon that's on their store. 
In our experience, only about 20% of merchants do that. Most are only selling a subset on Amazon. They put the whole thing there. And what they then do is use Amazon as something of a lead gen so that when they get sales on Amazon, they will include inserts or other things within the packaging that make the purchasers aware of their branded site and hopefully get some of those folks over to that branded site for subsequent purchases. And that works for them something like 25 to 30 percent of the time. Uh, so that's the unusual strategy of put it all on Amazon too and try to build awareness for your branded site through the packaging. A more common strategy is a second one, which is a merchant that sells a wide range of somewhat commoditized products coming up with individual ones that are unique to them and differentiated. You know, in, in the case of one merchant that's selling furniture, they came up with a product that was sturdier and you know, higher priced and higher quality than comparable products on the market. They put that on Amazon. Sure enough, there was a real need in the market for this product at a higher quality level, and it just sold like crazy. They could have put all their commoditized products on Amazon and had a very difficult time competing for the buy box and winning sales with those. They didn't even bother. They just focused on what they knew was differentiated. There wasn't a comparable product on Amazon, and they sold the daylights out of it there. Uh, a third example is a, an apparel retailer that's affiliated with a, you know, another larger brand. And they don't put all their product on Amazon, but what their website is for is full price sales. They have map pricing where they're not allowed to go through the manufacturer's price on their website. And they use Amazon for liquidation and discounting which really works on Amazon because when they've got something in bulk that they're willing to sell at a discounted price, Amazon loves a seller who has this combination of large inventory, lower price than the competition, and a track record of successful fulfillment. And you'll win the buy box in those situations. And so they're using Amazon for liquidation and some unique merchandise. Uh, and using their website for full price branded sales. I, I could give you other examples, but, but those are sort of three that have worked well for clients of ours that I've interviewed. You mentioned the native integration between Big Commerce's platform and Amazon. How does that work exactly? So if I'm a merchant, I've got my products on my Big Commerce site, what do I do to get them on Amazon? So we have integrated our platform via APIs into Amazon and created the functionality for someone to take uh, some or all of their product and map it into Amazon's catalog structure. We will do the best job we can finding the matching SKU. And in cases where there is insufficient information to figure that out, we return the uh, messaging and the error codes to the merchant to then do the either sort of manual lookup and matching or provide the extra information we need to map a merchant SKUs to Amazon SKUs. In those cases where there isn't an existing ASIN, there's a workflow for submitting a request and getting that approved by Amazon. Once you've then mapped the catalog between the two, a merchant can sell on Amazon at the same price as they are on their website, or they can go in and either manually adjust price on Amazon or use a third-party repricing tool. They can also change the content on Amazon to be different from that that's on their website. But the point is that there is a, an API mapping between the two so that Amazon knows what the inventory count is, and the inventory count is the same as what the merchant is using for their branded store. When there's a sale on Amazon, then that is confirmed back into Big Commerce. And so a merchant could, for example, use ShipStation to print the labels and fulfill for orders from the branded site or from Amazon. Uh, merchant would see common reporting across the two. Uh, so you're, you're, you're staying synced on your catalog, synced on your inventory, 
synced on your order processing and synced on your reporting, multi-channel uh, reporting. Let me change, shift gears uh, for a minute, Brent. Amazon is disrupting, of course, major segments of the U.S. economy, as we all know. It could be said that Amazon's disrupting e-commerce in a way, independent e-commerce. Is Amazon a competitor to big commerce? When I arrived at big commerce, conventional wisdom was that they are, that in essence we were creating an e-commerce platform to help merchants compete against Amazon in an Amazon-dominant world. And I reversed that mentality 100%. I spent almost 10 years at eBay, and I've always believed that instead of eBay and Amazon being competitors to merchants instead, they were the next two most promising channels those merchants could sell through. And it's our job as a platform not to position Amazon as the enemy, but instead enable our customers to succeed on Amazon and on eBay if that makes sense for their business. So I completely believe that Amazon is not a competitor uh, to big commerce. They're a partner of big commerce, and we encourage all of our merchants to get as many sales and achieve as much success as they possibly can on Amazon in addition to their branded stores. Let me ask you about big commerce specifically, the company. Certainly you have a very impressive board of directors led by Steve Case and other prominent investors. Big Commerce is a leading platform, as we all know. Do you have plans to go public? Nothing that we would comment on at this point. You know, you generally file an S-1 first, and once you file an S-1, that's when you are out in the market as being somebody who is looking to IPO. Uh, we are certainly on a track to have that option available to us, but we have not filed an S-1 and don't have anything to announce there as of this moment. Let's shift to other marketplaces, Brent, momentarily. Uh, you mentioned you came from eBay. This conversation has been centered around Amazon, but certainly there are other marketplaces. How should merchants decide which of those marketplaces to sell on? Well, we, we certainly encourage merchants to sell on as many as they can handle operationally. By our estimate, Amazon is 36% of U.S. e-commerce. eBay is 8%, but 8% is huge. And the things that sell on eBay are often different or sell differently than they do on Amazon uh, and differently from a merchant website. My point being that both the eBay consumer and what sells on eBay are different and complementary to the other two. And so for the vast majority of merchants, we say eBay needs to be on your top of your consideration list as a platform. We are hearing that the limited number of sellers who are on Walmart are achieving surprisingly good success, even though we don't have any reason to believe that Walmart's marketplace is nearly the size of eBay, let alone Amazon. Uh, apparently, it's working for those that are using it. And uh, if you're a customer who of ours and you want to take advantage of Walmart or any of the long list of other marketplaces from Etsy to Newegg to um, Overstock, you know, anybody else who has marketplace capabilities, then you know, consider getting one of the marketplace management platforms as the foundation by which you do it. But certainly there's an 80-20 rule, which is start with Amazon and start with eBay as a complement to a branded store. You said eBay is different. Different products sell on eBay. How so? Well, I'll give you uh, an example. There's, there's another case study of a food products and food appliance company that will say on their branded website what sells really successfully are the expensive high-end products, you know, the, the high-end appliances. What sells on Amazon tend to be the lower-priced food products, and what sells really well on eBay are parts. In fact, that's one of those categories, auto parts and parts in general, where eBay is still ahead of Amazon and ahead of really any other place on the web for people searching for things. So there are plenty of niches on eBay where uh, subsets of products sell 
far better than they do anywhere else because that's where people go to look for them, or the buyers will be looking for something different. You know, another would be bulk purchasing on eBay. Uh, you know, I, I have another client that reconditions electronics, you know, computers, cell phones, etc. And they said, you know, we, we should never sell on eBay because we can't compete against the individuals that are dumping their used laptop or their used cell phone. And I said, well, that's true, but what you can sell on eBay that purchasers are there looking for is bulk lots. If you have a bulk lot of 50 laptops, 50 cell phones that you're selling at a discount, then there are an incredible number of IT managers for small companies that are looking for discounted, refurbed bulk lots. eBay is better for that than anywhere else. So plenty of examples like this. You just have to understand uh, how to position the subset of what you have in a way that really caters to the buyers on a given marketplace. Okay. Brent, we just have another minute or so. Uh, anything else on your mind? Simply that if you are a seller looking to optimize and grow your business as large as you can on the web, um, you know, the top two places to start are your website and Amazon, followed by eBay. But don't forget other places where consumers go. And at the top of the list, are going to be having a great integration between your website and Google Shopping, having a great integration into Facebook, and uh, not just because of Facebook shops, but in particular to take advantage of pay, uh, Facebook product listing ads, where in essence you can have a pixel in your branded store and then retarget people who have been to your store but didn't purchase with the same products they looked at or maybe loaded into a cart and you can be doing that on Facebook even with a buy button attached. It really works for a lot of the merchants that are using it. Um, and so think about Google Shopping, think about Facebook, think about Pinterest. And we just announced Instagram a week or so ago. Soon you'll be able to commerce enable Instagram posts for those who follow you via that. That will be very powerful for brands with a strong following. Well, for purposes of our listeners, I've been visiting with Brent Bellum. Brent is the CEO of Big Commerce, a leading e-commerce platform, of course. That website is bigcommerce.com. And Brent Bellum, we want to thank you for your time today, sir. Thanks for having me.